Justin. Who's Justin, Jade? Watch your fingers. The Pennsylvania Assembly, the legislative branch of the colonial government, first met in this room in 1735. Forty years later, they would be kind enough to move upstairs. So that beginning in May of 1775, the Second Continental Congress could use this room. And when the delegates to that Congress first arrived, the majority of them did indeed want to work out their differences with Great Britain. They were proud of being British subjects, and for the most part, wanted to remain so. And that's the major issue that they debated in this room for more than a year before they determined that independence was really their only option left. On June 7, 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia introduced a resolution for independence. That resolution was approved here on July 2nd. For the next two days, the men meeting here argued over Mr. Jefferson's draft of the Declaration of Independence. They cut it by about 25% because of somewhere around 40 changes that they made to it. But they finally got it the way they wanted it to read and in this room. On July 4th, 1776, they approved the final version of the Declaration of Independence. However, they did not begin signing their names to that nice handwritten copy on parchment until almost a month later, August 2nd. It took time to get that official parchment copy of the Declaration prepared. But that doesn't mean they took the time off between July 4th and August 2nd, because they knew they still had very serious work to do. Because when they looked at the final version of the Declaration, they of course saw what we would see if we picked up a copy of it today. The vast majority of that document is really nothing more than a long list of grievances, complaints. 27 indictments against George III telling the world at posterity why they could no longer tolerate the King's authority over them. And they also realized that just because they said in that declaration that they were throwing off the king's authority, as well as providing the 27 reasons for wanting to do so, it did not necessarily mean that they would immediately secure or be handed their liberty. They knew they would still have to complete a long, hard, very difficult war against the strongest empire on earth. And in order to do so with any hope of success, they knew they would have to put together some kind of government. So they started working on a government known as the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union a government that when ratified would be good enough to successfully see them through the American Revolution, but not good enough to bind the states together once the war was over. And that was because what was created with the Articles was really nothing more than a firm legal friendship. Thirteen almost totally independent republics coming together in a common cause to achieve a common goal. Once that goal was achieved in defeat of Great Britain, the states started to fall apart. So 11 years after signing the Declaration of Independence right here in this room, some people had a very good idea that it was time for another meeting. Again, they chose Philadelphia, once again in this room. And when the delegates to that convention began to arrive in this city throughout the month of May 1787, most of them took their seats with the idea, as well as the instructions from their states, that they were only coming here to revamp the Articles of Confederation, make the existing government just a bit stronger. But they soon realized that, that would be impossible to do. So they decided to go against their instructions. They put that government aside, sat down, started working on a brand new government, developing, of course, the Constitution of the United States. And so from the end of May through the middle of September of 1787, those gentlemen sat in this room, they argued, they debated, but the best thing that they did, not only for themselves but for us, was to compromise on most, if not all, of the issues at hand. And on the last day of the convention, for working out all the compromises, reaching all the agreements in this room on September 17th, 1787. 38 gentlemen got up from their chairs, stepped forward, dipped their quills in the inkstand, the same one that had been used to sign the Declaration of Independence here 11 years before, and in this room on that day, signed your names to the Constitution of the United States. However, when those gentlemen did sign their names to that document in this room on that day, all they were really doing was approving of the work that they had accomplished in this room over that summer. It would take another nine months to get enough states to ratify the Constitution to put it into effect. Pennsylvania was the second state to ratify it. That right, because they're ratifying convention right upstairs. That's where we'll go next. But before we do, are there any questions about anything up to this point? Yes. 